second song say, I call you faithful, oh God. You never one day, oh God, leave us. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you the highest praise. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Come on, help me sing great. Great and mighty is our God. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you.
everything you go through is a testimony. It's a testimony. Come on, you should have been dead a long time. It's a testimony. Come on, put your hands together as a testimony. God, you are welcome in this place, God. You are welcome, God. You are welcome, God. It's a testimony. That's why I will lift my voice and I will sing holy, God.
Come on, say holy, say it, say it. Come on, say holy. Softly, softly, come on, you say holy. Come on, all over this sanctuary, say holy. Come on, cry out to him, tell him he's Come on, tell him he is You know that word holy, it means set apart. It means there's no other God like you. And I don't know about you, but I know that nowhere I go, no one I come in contact with can ever compare to our God. And so here's what I want you to do. When I want you standing all over the building and I want you to let our God know that we know that He is awesome. He is set apart. He is almighty. He is omnipotent. He's omniscient. omniscient. Come on, tell him, say, you're holy. Come on, tell him, say, Lord, you're holy. You're set apart, God. There's no one like you. Say, we can search the north, the south, the east, the west. Hallelujah. 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 If you believe he's holy, could you put your hands together all over this sanctuary? Come on, you could do better than that. Put your hands together all over the sanctuary. Here's what I want you to do just before we transition. I want you to get the hand of at least two persons or one person. But I want you to form a circle, not form a line. I want you to form a circle and not a line. And so I want you to grab the hand of one or two persons. Everybody grabbing somebody's hand. Amen. Everybody grabbing somebody's hand. Amen. Now your circle got to be so that you could talk to the persons you're holding. Amen. Hallelujah. So as you're looking at them, say, neighbor. Look at me. Look at you. We made it into 2014. After everything that you've been through. After everything that I've been through. I'm standing here today with a praise in my mouth. With joy in my heart. And no matter what the devil did, he couldn't take us out. And so when you're holding my hand, you're holding a testimony. Are there any testimonies up inside here today? Are there any testimonies in here today? Come on, grab the hand. Grab the hand of that person. Now here's what we're going to do. See, this is a new year. And last year's anointing ain't going to do for you this year. See, because this is our year of greater, the devil is going to come at you in greater ways. And so what you're going to do right now is you're going to cover the person whose hands you're holding and you're going to pray for them and you're saying, devil, no weapon formed against them this year will be able to prosper. Everything you have planned, God is going to bring it down because where two of us should touch and agree asking anything in his name, it shall be done. And so you're going to pray for that person's prosperity. You're going to pray for that person's healing. You're going to pray for that person's deliverance. You're going to pray for that person's protection. Because you don't know what they had to go through. But the devil messed up when he allowed them to get in here. And so we're going to pray for one another. Come on, let's cover the person whose hands you're holding. Come on, pray for that person. Come on, pray for that person. Hallelujah. Come on, pray for that person. Hey, Shandoko Ribandoko Shata. Oh God, right now, every hurt, every pain, every weapon that may try to come to bring them down. We thank you that this year you're going to cover them. This year you're going to cause the anointing of God, Heavenly Father, to be so evident in their lives that no matter what they go through, they're going to come out as victorious. They're going to come out as conquerors. They're going to come out, Father God on the winning side no matter what they face no matter what
trials, no matter what tribulations. God, thank you, God, that they're going to come out fire, not even smelling like smoke. They're going to walk through the waters, and it won't overcome them. Oh, God, the enemy may come one way, but he's got to flee seven ways. The Lord is our light and our salvation. This year, we've got nothing to worry about, nothing to fear, for you are with us, God never to leave us nor forsake us and we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise now come on loose that hand and give God praise if you believe he's a God that answers prayer come on you can do better than that give God praise hallelujah here's what I want you to do before you're seated here's what I want you to do before you're seated I want you to find at least two people and say neighbor this year you're covered man you're covered I need you to leave your seat don't be stuck up I need you to touch somebody you didn't touch already and tell them you're covered this year you're covered you're you're covered come on tell them say you're covered you're covered you're covered you're covered Hallelujah. All right, everybody just say this. Say, I declare that I'm in the right place at the right time for the right thing from the right God. And I know that's right. If you believe it, put your hands together one more time. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. We're in the right place at the right time for the right thing from the right God. And we know that's right. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. That's here today. We know that God is an incredible God. He is an awesome God. And he is worthy to be praised. Somebody shout worthy. Amen. He is worthy to be praised. We want to first of all welcome all of those that are streaming with us. Amen. Via the internet. Amen. We want to thank God for all of those streaming with us via the internet today. And so I want you guys to put your hands together. Let them know. Amen. That we're here. Amen. And we thank God for them. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for him. And so, of course, amen, we are also grateful for those of you, first of all, that are visiting us for the first or the second time. Amen. For the first or the second time. Now, listen, here at Relevant Kingdom Center, we're not trying to embarrass you. We just want to embrace you. And I know when you go to churches for the first time, you really don't care for the pastor to say, man, you all stand and raise your hand. But can I just tell you all, here at Relevant Kingdom Center, we ain't watching nothing. Amen. And we we're just grateful that you're here because you could have gone to any other church but the Lord allowed you to come here amen on this first Sunday in the year 2014 so we want to celebrate you we want to embrace you so if this is your first or second time here could you stand right where you're at don't be scared don't be scared stand right where you're at amen okay I need someone from relevant kingdom center or that go here to stand up go ahead and touch these people let them know it's good to have them come on let them know it's good to have them hallelujah let them know it's good to have them in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen and so we thank God for you guys being here man and we're grateful and then of course i would be remiss because I'm seeing a lot of faces back and so for those of you that are travel with traveling man let me tell y'all first of all y'all missed the good 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 time amen how much of y'all could agree with pastor right there amen y'all missed the real good time and I'm telling you the day is gonna come where you're gonna have to say man family y'all come to me in Exuma amen cuz I can't afford to leave amen I can't afford to leave amen to this this season because I don't want to miss what's going down but for all of you that weren't here man we want to thank God for you being back safely and so for all of you that are here and back especially the teachers and those that traveled amen we put our hands together and we bless God for you amen we thank God for you guys amen for being here 
with us on today let me just say this amen that of course um it's also good to have sister antonette back and we know that sister antonette has been gone for some months amen she's been gone for some months in barbados right barbados but it's good to have her back come on let's put our hands together and let her know amen that we missed her amen on today and so we thank God for you. Amen. We're trying to get this, this uh, PowerPoint up here because we're going to go into a new declaration that the Lord had given us um, for this year. And how much of you know that when you make declarations over your life, that the word that you speak have the ability and the power to cause things to come to pass. Amen. The Bible says that the tongue is one of the most powerful members that you have. It's like the rudder of a ship. You know, the ship rudder is very small, but yet it can turn a huge ship no matter where it wants it to go. So is your tongue. The Bible says your tongue is like a fire. It could set the whole course of life amen of a, a, a flame and a blaze and so i want you to know today amen that you have the ability amen to declare a thing and it shall be established somebody say i know that's right hallelujah and so what we're going to do amen is if they can't get it up you guys are just going to repeat after me because we're going to make our declaration amen on today and so i want everybody to repeat after me amen i want everyone to repeat after me and I want y'all to say these declarations loud and clear. Say, we declare, we declare that we shall respond to opposition, respond to opposition. as opportunities. We declare, we declare we will not settle, accept less, or be average. We will pursue excellence in Jesus' name. Say, we declare we will be productive and invest our time wisely we won't waste time or allow others to waste our time okay let me say that one more time amen say we declare we will be productive and invest our time wisely we won't waste time or allow others to waste our time say we declare we shall increase in generosity and we won't live in lack we will multiply in finances and in resources to help advance god's kingdom anything we ask in his name shall be done whatever our hands touch shall prosper and we will acquire new territories in Jesus name say we declare kings will come to the brightness of our rising sons and daughters will be raised up we will be a light in the dark a city on a hill that cannot be hid our members will increase our services will be filled and we will touch the world with the gospel for God's glory two more say we declare the sick will come and be healed say bring the rich and they shall increase in good works bring the poor and they will be made rich bring the sinner and they will be saved bring the brokenhearted and they shall be mended bring the black slidden and they shall be restored in Jesus name we ain't finished but if you believe that could you put your hands together right there last one say we declare that sinners will be saved lives will be changed leaders will be developed this is our season this is our year greater is not just coming but greater is here Come on, if you believe that greater is here. Amen. If you believe greater is here. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Greater is here. 
hallelujah hallelujah amen well we want to tell you amen outside of our declaration because we believe that greater is here we're going to do something greater amen than we've actually done before and so this year amen what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tithing our very first seven days to god amen the the, the seven days that are coming up we're going to be um tithing those days to god what do i mean every evening we're going to corporately come together um from monday straight into Sunday amen we're going to come together every evening and what we're going to do is we're going to spend time an hour everybody say an hour we're going to spend an hour in prayer amen we're going to spend an hour in prayer and not only that we're going to make sacrifices everybody say sacrifice we're going to make sacrifices meaning we're going to be fasting and so how much of y'all had a good Christmas and y'all ate a whole lot of stuff amen y'all ate a whole lot of stuff how much y'all didn't eat that much Y'all can lie, eh? <laughs> Amen. But I can tell you, man, I ate a whole lot. As a matter of fact, um, today is going to be my last day to grub, get my grub on. Because we're going to be going on a Daniel's fast. Now, the Daniel's fast is basically when you would have um, no sweets. You would just have 100% juice if you have to drink juice. And then you will have water. Outside of water, then you will only have vegetables. Okay, you will only have vegetables. That means that you're going to have green vegetables, not the canned vegetable soup. Hallelujah. But you're going to have green vegetables. And when you have green vegetables, it's from Daniel. Amen. When Daniel told the, the king's servant, he said, man, listen, don't feed us all of that other stuff. But if you give me vegetables and if you give us water, I guarantee you I'm going to look better than all of the other people that are eating all of the king's food. And can I tell you, if you sacrifice the first seven days, if you sacrifice over these next couple of days, I believe that you're going to look better than anybody else out there. Amen. That don't make the sacrifice. Somebody all I know, that's right. If you can't get it, don't worry about it. I'll just, amen, do it, do with it as it is. Amen. So you got to make the sacrifice because if you make the sacrifice, I believe that God's going to take you to another level. Somebody all I know, that's right. Amen. And so what we're going to do, amen, is we're going to sacrifice those next, amen, few days. How much of you believe that that's something that you're going to try your best to do? You're going to try your best to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm glad you say try. Amen. I'm glad you said try. Amen. And so what we're going to do, we're going to get into the word of the Lord on today. And so what I want you to do is grab your Bibles with me. And because our screen for some reason isn't coming up, what we're going to do is we're going to ask all of you that have a Bible, amen, to make sure that you share with somebody that's next to you. And of course, that's why we encourage you to continue to bring your Bible because sometimes technology is just that way. Amen. It's just that way. And so also next week, our children's ministry, our now kids, they're going to start off next week Sunday. And so our kids are still in with us today. But next week Sunday, um, they're going to go ahead and they're going to get started. I want everybody to stand out of reverence for the word of the Lord today as we get ready to get into, amen, the word. I want everybody to stand out of reverence for God's word today. I want you to turn with me to the book of John chapter 3 verse 30. And then I want you to go ahead and get Philippians chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 and then I'll go ahead and read the last scripture and we're going to take a journey and we're going to complete what we started on New Year's Eve how much of you were here on New Year's Eve amen how much of you were blessed just say hallelujah amen and so John chapter 3 verse 30 it says he must increase everybody say he must increase but I must decrease that's John 3 verse 30 Philippians 3 verse 3 to 4 Philippians 3 verse 3 to 4 it says for we worship by the spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us we put no confidence in human effort though I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could indeed if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts I have even more Judges chapter 7 verse 15 to 19 is our very last scripture it reads when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation he bowed in worship before the Lord then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted get up everybody shout get up get up for the Lord has given you victory look at your neighbor say God's given you victory 
You talking to the wrong neighbor already? Turn to somebody else. Say the Lord has given you victory. The Lord has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Amen. Verse 17, then he said to them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those who with, are with me blow the rams on, blow your horns too all around the entire camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. It was just after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and 100 of those men with him reached the end, the edge of the Midianite camp, and suddenly they blew their rams horns and broke, broke their clay jars today if I could tag a topic to the text that we read that we're going to take a journey and connect um, it would be he is helping me to get over me he's helping me to get over me if I could put a subtopic to it it would be I'm broken to be blessed I'm broken to be blessed pray with me father as we go into your word today I pray that I decrease you increase we come against, Father God, even now the distractions that would try, Father God, to come our way. We come against, Father God, every distraction that would hinder us from the word of the living God. And so today, Lord, we ask right now that you be praised, that you be glorified, that I decrease, you increase. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's helping me to get over me could you just make that declaration i don't want you to look at your neighbor i don't want you to talk to the person to your left or to your right at this moment but i just want you to make that declaration with me one more time say he's helping me to get over me hallelujah this past new year's eve uh we discovered that each of us have greatness on the inside of us each of us have greatness on the inside of us, regardless of what may be around us. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that because at the end of the day, people will try to tell you that you're great based on just what's around you. But the Bible declares that greater is he that is where? Within us than he that is in the world. And so every person under the sound of my voice, especially those that have connected their lives to Jesus, you have greatness on the inside of you. I don't care what your physical DNA may be. I don't care, amen, what kind of environment that you may have grown up in. I don't care the kind of clothes that you are able to afford, the kind of car that you're able to drive. Every one of us have greatness on the inside of us, regardless what may be around us. However, everybody say however. However, in order for that greatness to become realized or manifested, we must get, first of all, the greatest obstacle that hinders us from reaching our greatness and reaching our destinations out of our way. We've got, the, got to get the greatest obstacle. And here's what we found out. We found out that our greatest obstacle aren't haters. While haters may be an obstacle, they aren't our greatest obstacle. Our greatest obstacle are not issues or circumstances. Our greatest obstacle, amen, guess what it is? We found out and we discovered that our greatest obstacle, amen, to our greatest destination or to our greatest opportunities, our greatest obstacle is ourselves. Let me just say it like this. You are your greatest obstacle. You are your greatest obstacle this year you cannot begin to shift the blame on everybody else now you were blaming a lot of things and a lot of people last year but this year everybody say this year this year you've got to take responsibility for yourself as a matter of fact, if you don't reach greatness this year, it's not going to be because of haters. It's not going to be because of issues. If you don't reach the greatness that you're supposed to reach this year, it's going to be because of, watch this y'all, you. Let me say that one more time. Amen. If you don't reach greatness this year, it's going to be because of you. Everybody say because of you. 
You see, because you can stop you from living in excellence and cause you to be stuck in mediocrity. You can stop you from starting the business, getting the degree, taking the necessary risk. You can stop you from walking in faith or obedience. You are your greatest obstacle. And this year, in order for you to walk in greatness, you have to be willing to face that greatest endurance and come to the self-realization that in order for life to change, you have got to change. Oh, somebody shall preach, young man. I'm already doing the best I can. Can I tell you, in order for your life to change, you've got to change. You see, because there are people that would find themselves stuck year after year, time after time, and they wonder why I'm stuck. And it's because you decide that you're not going to change. But this year, you've got to say to yourself, I'm going to change. And that's why I believe a lot of you showed up the first Sunday in this year to church because you say if it's anything you're going to be doing different this year is you're going to give God more time than you've given him last year. Somebody, oh, I know that's right. Right, so you've got to, to make sure that you change. Amen, you've got to make sure that you change. And watch this, y'all. No one can change you but no. I was waiting on it. No one can change you but you, but God. <laughs> y'all cost that. No one can change you but God. Y'all, I wish we had the screen up like, like we usually do because it would help you guys to really grasp what I'm saying. But can I just tell you, amen, only God can change you. See, I've tried changing me a whole lot of times. And I realize every time I try to change me, I come up short and I always frustrate myself. Maybe I'm alone. Maybe none of y'all can testify with pastor. Amen. But is there anybody up in here that can testify? I've tried to change me. And even every time I've tried to change me, I end up coming Okay, y'all looking at me strange, especially y'all real holy people because you're trying to figure out what I'm talking about. But let me just tell you what Paul says. Here's what Paul says in Romans chapter 7, amen, verse 18. He says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me. Wait a minute, preacher. You just finished telling me that greatness is on the inside of me. And now Paul is saying that nothing good dwells on the inside of me. There's an oxymoron, but here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, amen, that nothing good dwells in my flesh. Paul is saying this flesh will do all sorts of things. Okay, I, I ain't coming to y'all house yet, so let me just start to get my bowling ball. And I come in right down where y'all at, and I going to strike some of y'all right now. But can I tell y'all, ain't nothing good dwell in this flesh, because I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much times you've been coming to church. If somebody missing, get on your wrong side, watch the flesh come up, and you curse them out. If somebody, amen, gets on your wrong side, watch how much good in this flesh. Okay, maybe some of y'all could control y'all anger and control, amen, when somebody step on the wrong side of you, amen, but there's some of y'all, amen, that's something that look real good. Pass you. As safe as you are. And don't let that thing look real good. Because you'll see that nothing good, watch this, is in the flesh. Look at your neighbor say, get over it. But ain't nothing good in your flesh. Hallelujah. Nothing good in the flesh. He says, watch this. He says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire. God, I could tell you I have the desire to do the good things that you want me to do. I have the desire to achieve the great things that you have in store for me. I have the desire. Amen. But watch this. He says, even though I have the desire, he says to do what is right, I do not have the ability to carry it out. He says, good as I want to be, as much as I want to change my ways, as much as I want to turn my back on certain things that I know made me no good, as much as I have the desire, I 
don't have the ability. That's why I tell people all the time, if you think you're going to change you, you're going to always find yourself frustrated. You're going to always find yourself coming up short. And that's when you're going to get so frustrated that you stop coming to church. You stop trying, amen, to do your best because you figure it's always going to be this way. No, baby, it ain't always going to be this way. But here's the thing. Even though Paul says, I don't have the ability to change me, here's what he said. He said, but who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if there's about 10 in y'all your, in here that can testify. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Because the amount of times that you wanted to do some things in the flesh, all you could do is say, thank God for Jesus. As much as you wanted to kill those children, all you could do is say, thank God for Jesus. As much as you wanted to tell some people a part of your mind, amen, all you could say is, thank God for Jesus. As much as you wanted to call them on the phone and make a late night call, amen, all you could do is say, thank God for Jesus. Are there anybody up in here that could say, I thank God? Somebody ought to preach, young man. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting already. Amen. But all I can do is say, thank God for Jesus. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't know but you. But in 2013, all I can do is say is, thank God for Jesus. Say, and in 2014, all I know is, I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody know you need Jesus? Hallelujah. Because it was in 2013 that it was only because of Jesus that I, ke I was kept. In 2013, it was only because of Jesus I didn't lose my mind. In 2013, it's only because of Jesus I still get the peace of mind and the joy that I get. I just need about 10 people to stand at your feet and thank God for Jesus if you got him in your life. Because if it was not for Jesus, you wouldn't have been here today. Give your neighbor a high five and say thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. And so here's the thing. I realized then in order for you to get rid of you, you got to die to this flesh. In order for you to achieve the greatness that you're going to achieve this year, you're going to die to the flesh. And I'm so glad all of you came to church today. Amen. Because this is not one of them popular messages. I'm telling you. Amen. You ain't going to shout too much. But, but can I tell you, if you hear me good, and if you really allow this message to get into your heart, I believe that there's nothing that's going to be able to hinder you from experiencing the greatness that God has in store for you. And I don't know about you. Amen. But this year, I know that there's some great things in store. I don't know about you, but I know that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has in store for me. You could talk about me all you want, but baby, greatness is here. Amen. You could look at me with that kind of eye, but greatness is here. Amen. You could afford it don't like me, but greatness is You got to die to you. As a matter of fact, every great person that I know that ever achieved greatness in their lives had to die to self. Every great person had to die to self. Y'all know on New Year's Eve, I told y'all about a great person that I admire and his name was Nelson Mandela. But do you know that Nelson Mandela, he was so great, but Nelson Mandela had to die to himself in order for him to achieve that greatness. Because I already told you, your flesh will get in your way. Amen. Your flesh will stop you from ob obtaining and possessing the things that God has promised. But Nelson Mandela, he was one of those that had to let self go. Because after he was jailed, watch this, for 27 years, he could have allowed bitterness and envy and anger and hatred to get up in his heart. Who am I talking to up inside here today? I'm talking about getting rid of you so that you could achieve the greatness that God has for you. Nelson Nelson Mandela could have allowed all sorts of things to get up in his heart. But the truth of the matter is, he said, watch this. I'm not going to allow anything that will hinder me from being who God has called me to be to stay in my life. Watch what he said. This is a quote from Nelson Mandela. He said, as I walked out of the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. 
Let me say it one more time. Woo, this is some good stuff. He said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'll still be in prison. Can I tell somebody something? You may be free today, but you're still bound. You want me to tell you why? Because there's some things that are caught up in your heart, some things that are caught up in your mind. And God's saying, listen, you got to be willing to get over it. You've got to be willing to let them go. You got to be willing to not allow anything to stay in your life that would hinder you, that will stop you from going forward. As a matter of fact, I made up my mind that this year nothing and no one is going to stop me from going to where God has in store for me. Somebody haul in saying, no, that's right yeah he says watch this and and not just Nelson Mandela but there were other great men that were from biblical amen times like the apostle Paul how much of you could admit with me that the apostle Paul was a great man amen as a matter of fact the apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the entire New Testament the apostle Paul amen was one of those that God used to establish more churches that wrote more letters that did more things than most of the disciples or the other apostles did but watch what Paul said amen here's what Paul said to the church at Corinth Paul says watch this he said I forget those things that are behind me and I look forward to the things that are ahead of me okay y'all didn't shout off that so let me go back up a few verses hear what Paul said before he said I forget and I look forward here's what he said he said listen y'all around here letting people fool y'all talking but they accomplished this they accomplished that and you got to be circumcised in your flesh and watch what Paul said Paul says these jokers that are around here amen that bragging to y'all that talking but I got it all together I'm the bag of chips with the dip the bomb on the shell off the chain the railroad all them metal substance he said them jokers ain't got nothing on what God had already allowed me to accomplish in my life he says watch this if you want to talk about accomplishments I am a Hebrew of Hebrews you want to talk about accomplishments? I went to one of the best schools amen that the time has to offer I went to the, the school of Gamaliel yeah I went amen watch this he says I was circumcised on the eighth day he says, I obtained so much different things, but watch what I do. He says, I count all that stuff as dung. I count all that stuff as dung. You want me to tell you why? Because I realize that none of that stuff, hallelujah, really matters when it comes to God. Hallelujah. None of that stuff determines my value. Good for you if you get it. Amen. It's going to help you, but it don't determine your value. Amen. Because can I just tell y'all, man, I'm getting ahead of myself, but can I just tell y'all, amen, that some of the things you're going to accomplish, amen, people that don't get, that, that amen, got a better degree than you, going to be looking like, how in the world did they accomplish what they accomplished? Amen. Why? Because when it comes to God, all God got to do is put his hand on you, and he'll cause you to act excel and be the head somebody holler I'm doing the best I can yeah because I'm preaching better than y'all shouting watch this amen amen Paul said this he says he says I focus on the things then amen that are ahead look at somebody say ahead everybody say ahead yeah you gotta look amen at the things that are ahead of you and can I just get a test real quick is there anybody that have already looked ahead amen is there anybody that know that there's some great things ahead is there anybody that know amen that God's gonna blow your mind ahead amen can is there anybody that could just celebrate real quick by putting your hands together all the great things that are uh Look at your neighbor and say, you don't know what's ahead for you. Hallelujah. You're talking to the wrong neighbor. Turn to somebody else and say, you don't know what's ahead for you. Yeah. Amen. But watch this, y'all. Y'all know Nelson was great. Paul was great. But how much of y'all could admit with me that Jesus is greatest? Yeah. Jesus is greatest. Amen. Watch what, what Jesus did. Do you know when Jesus walked as a man... Jesus even had to die to himself. Hmm. Jesus, in order for him to accomplish the greatness that was ahead, had to die to himself. Watch what Jesus said. 
And this was right before his crucifixion. You all know the story if you went to Sunday school. He took his disciples into the garden and he said to them, pray with me for a while. Amen. Because I'm getting ready to, to, to go in some prayer and there's some things that I got to struggle with. Amen. The Bible says Jesus went ahead of them and he started to sweat tears of blood. And watch what Jesus said. Jesus said this. He said this God as he's praying to his father. He says, not my will. Watch this. Not my will. Can I tell you why a lot of you guys have been frustrated every year? It's because you've been trying to accomplish your will. <laughs> you've been trying to accomplish your way. You've been trying to do things your way. And he says, God, I got some things that I want, that I will. But can I tell you, here's the scripture. Let me just parenthetically insert the scripture here. Many of the plans of a man's heart. Watch this. But at the end of the day, it is God's will that prevails. That means you could have some plans, but baby, if it ain't a part of God's plan ain't gonna prevail you may have some things that you write down i want this i want that 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 you could sound like a scratch record i want this i want that i want this i want that i want this i want that but if it ain't god's will it ain't gonna happen jesus himself says father i really don't feel like going through this no more because this is hard but nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. I told y'all I wish I had this PowerPoint, but then we go to John. Y'all, we hear New Year's Eve. The Bible says, amen, in Matthew chapter 11, that among those that were born of women, there was none greater than John. That's what the Bible says. So Nelson Mandela ain't got nothing on John. Bill Gates, Stephen Jobs, ain't none of these people got nothing on John he says among those born of women there was none greater than John but watch this here's a statement John made John says he must become greater and I gotta become less okay can I just tell you because a lot of y'all look like y'all was in here on New Year's Eve Watch what happened. There were some people that came to John and they said, John, you ain't no way. Everybody going over there to the man you met across the Jordan, who you baptized, saying, this is the one that you've been waiting on. Say, John, you ain't know that they ain't coming over here no more and people debating, but Jesus' baptism is greater. John say, hold on, y'all, don't trip. Don't trip, don't trip, because at the end of the day, even though, amen, I am who I am, I still ain't greater than him. And John said this, the crowd will naturally go where the main attraction is. Can I ask you a question? Who's the main attraction in your life? Amen. What's the main attraction? What's the main goal in your life? He says, watch this. The bridegroom's friend will rejoice for the bridegroom because the bride ain't come to stand up with the bridegroom's friend. The bride comes to go to the bridegroom. Hallelujah. And so at the end of the day, John says, here's what's going to happen. I'm becoming less so that he could become greater. Look at somebody say, get rid of you hallelujah look at somebody else say you're in the way hallelujah i'm telling you guys amen you've got to decrease then amen in order for god to increase in your life amen and unless you decrease you will not increase let me say it one more time unless you decrease you will not one more time unless you you will not Hallelujah. Can we say that just one more time? Unless you, you will not. But watch what happened. 
Matthew 11, verse 11. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is risen none greater than John the Baptist. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says. Listen. He says, yet the one who is least. The one who is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Wow. You mean to tell me. God, if I get rid of this flesh and I really decrease and I say, God, you're going to have every part of my life. That kind of greatness is in store for me. Little old me from, from Exuma, little old me, amen, from, from the family that everybody say ain't going to never amount to nothing. Little old me that didn't even get a college degree. Little old me that struggled just to get my high school diploma. Little old me, amen, that everybody always putting down. Little old me, amen, that seemed to always struggle to get things right. Little old me, if I decrease, you telling me, God, that you're going to increase me and that I shall be greater than John after you stated that there is none greater than John. And here's the answer, yes, if you get rid of you, there ain't no stopping what God has in store for you. I need about 10 people that believe that to give God praise. I want you, we repeated some declarations, so I want y'all to repeat after me. Say, this year, I have to get over myself to walk in and experience greatness. Watch this, say, more of him and less of me. Say it one more time, say, more of him. And less of me. Hallelujah. In order for you to get greatness. Amen. You got to die to you. I told you all all of that. Because here's where I'm going. I want to show you guys what dying to yourself looks like. I want to show you guys. what Because it ain't enough for me to come up here like every other preacher would. And beat you over your head. I say die. Die to yourself. But I don't tell you what dying to yourself look like can I tell y'all the reason why greatness is in store for some of y'all is because you've been dying to yourself and you ain't even realize it yet over the past couple of months but after I show you what dying looks like you're gonna say oh God that's what you've been doing you've been preparing me for greatness and can I tell y'all dying to yourself looks a whole lot different from what we've always been taught die into ourselves look like as a matter of fact amen i'm going to show you two components of dying to yourself the first component but let me just give you the scripture in matthew 16 and if you're taking notes you can write these scriptures down matthew 16 verse 24 to 25 watch this it says if anyone wishes to call come after me he must deny him and take up his, yeah, I got some Sunday school students in here. And take up his cross and then follow. So the first component to dying is pain. The first component to dying is pain. See, the cross is more than something you wear around your neck. If you were to ever understand the excruciating pain and the embarrassment of the cross, when he said, you got to take up your cross, see the audience who Jesus was talking to, they were familiar with crucifixion. They were familiar with the cross. And so he says, you got to take up your cross. Everybody say your cross. your cross. And follow me. Watch this. But here's the next component. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but, everybody say but. but. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The second component then, the first component is pain. The second component is purpose. You're going to have pain, but you're going to find purpose. Ah, let me say that one more time. You're going to have pain. But you will find purpose. And I'm going to prove it. Here's what dying to self looks like. Dying to self then is having confidence without arrogance. You got to have confidence, but you can't be arrogant. 
That's why, amen, on New Year's Eve, I tell you, you got to get over yourself. Because there's a whole lot of people that stuck on themselves. And watch this. Dying to self, though, is not making yourself less than what God made you or designed you to be. Because whenever you hear about dying to yourself, you feel like you got to, amen, dummy down yourself. You feel like you can, amen, understand or recognize the gift that God has given to you. Can I tell you all? That's why I told you all in the beginning of the message. Every one of you have greatness. But at the end of the day, the greatness does not start with you and it does not end with you. It starts with God and it ends with God that's why you can't be arrogant that's why you can't look down on people just because you gifted just because you talented just because you blessed come on now somebody amen why because you can't be arrogant see arrogance is having confidence in the flesh and I already told you the flesh ain't got nothing good on the inside of it amen you can't amen have arrogance you gotta you gotta die to yourself but dying to yourself is not downplaying yourself so other people could feel better about themselves <laughs> you ain't have to down that's why um nelson mandela said amen who are you not to be beautiful smart talented gorgeous amen all of these different things he says don't downplay yourself just so other people could feel secure around you as a matter of fact some people felt insecure around you and the reason why they've been putting you down amen is because they was trying to make themselves feel better but this year god says i don't care who's around you don't you downplay your gift don't you downplay yourself to make them feel better as a matter of fact they better get ready to move and get out the way because god is getting ready to elevate some of you in the place of some arrogant people hallelujah let me just say it one more time amen because i believe that's for three people there's some arrogant people on your job there there's some arrogant people in the workplace and here's what god is saying god's saying if you keep your heart humble and if you continue to keep the confidence in yourself i'm gonna elevate you over arrogant people Watch this. Amen. So dying to self is not letting go of confidence. Rather, it's letting go of arrogance. It's trusting God rather than trusting you. And while I'm gifted and talented, it's only by God's grace that I am what I am. Amen. Can I just get somebody to say that with me? Say it's only by his grace. Hallelujah. Somebody holler. It's only by his grace. Hallelujah. Can I just tell somebody, amen, it's because of his grace that you are who you are. It's because of his grace that you've made it this far. It's because of his grace, amen, that you could stand, amen, with hands lifted up it's because of his grace that you got the clothes that you got on it's because of his grace that you got the roof that you got over your head it's because of his grace that you got the money that you have in your pocket it's because of his grace and I don't know about you every time I think about grace sister Anne I get a little excited hallelujah because I realize that if it had not been for grace and if it had not been for mercy can I just get about 10 people that know about grace amen just to stand to your feet and justify that if it had not not been for his <laughs> hallelujah as a matter of fact can I just tell y'all God's about to blow your mind so much that it's, it's only going to be by grace that you're going to be able to experience the greatness that come in your way. When people look at you a few months from now, they're going to say, girl, how did you make it over all of the stuff that you made it through? Here's the only way you're going to be able to respond if it hadn't been for his grace. Hallelujah. When you open up the business, they're going to say the economy is so bad. The bank's in letting out no money. What you going to say to that? It's only because of his grace. Hallelujah. When you move in that brand new house after the bank been denying you time after time again, can I tell you, you're going to be able to respond. It's only because somebody shout grace. Hallelujah, yeah. After you done been through that bad divorce, you were able to find somebody, amen, that you could actually be, amen, who God has called you to be with. And people going to look at you and say, I thought you was done. I thought you was finished. But you're going to be able to say, it's only because of his grace. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, these things are so great, amen, that watch this. Grace says that what I got ain't got nothing to do with me. 
These things are going to be so big, Anike, amen, that you yourself going to know that you ain't got nothing to do with it. Look at somebody say, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. So when your haters get mad at you, just tell them, baby, I ain't got nothing to do with it. You need to take it up with God. When people start talking about you because of the blessings that are going to come your way, say, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Look at your neighbor, say, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Say a few months from now, come on, talk to them. Say a few months from now, I could be looking better than you see me right now. But I just want to tell you, come on, say, I just want to tell you, I got nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. If you know that that's the kind of God you serve, that'll give you grace. That'll give you grace. Watch this. Grace, I like this if you write and write it down. Amen. Grace will cause you to encounter greatness. I like it. Grace will cause you to encounter greatness. That's why you ain't got no choice but to walk in greatness. Because you ain't got no choice but to walk in his grace. Hallelujah. It's his grace and mercy that brought me through. It's his grace and mercy that's kept me this long. It's his grace and mercy as well I could keep a smile on my face. It's his grace and mercy that I still get peace of mind and the right mind. It's his grace and mercy. Is there anybody at the first Sunday in the new year could give God some real prayers? Because if it had not been for his grace. Preach, dearie. You're preaching better than they shouting. Hallelujah, grace. Somebody holler grace. Hallelujah, somebody holler grace. Hallelujah, somebody holler grace. No wonder in Philippians 3, Paul says, I put no confidence in human effort. I put no confidence in the stuff that I accomplish. I put no confidence. Because I realize it's only by grace. And I don't know about y'all, but one of my prayer requests is God give me an extra dose of grace in 2014. God give me an extra dose of grace. Uh, because the grace from last year ain't going to do. I need some fresh grace for this year. Is there anybody here that needs some fresh grace? Oh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Watch this. Let me just show y'all. I, I got to move on. Amen. Because I know y'all ain't come here to let your macaroni burn. But can I tell y'all? Amen. Did I tell y'all? The Bible says that, the, that John was the greatest of all. Amen. John was the greatest man to ever be born to, to women. But watch this, y'all. Watch what the word John means in the Hebrew language. The word John means grace. What? cost me put this mic down and run around the church one more time and come in here <laughs> John means grace no wonder ain't nobody else could have been greater than John because whenever you hear John all you heard was grace hallelujah when John stepped up inside someplace all they heard was grace when he walked into an environment all they saw was grace every time somebody called John name here's what they said grace hallelujah can I just tell y'all I'm getting a little name change it may sound a little eh, but I want them call me grace hallelujah hallelujah look at your neighbor say grace hallelujah say that's your name hallelujah because the greatness that you're about to experience is going to only be by his y'all watch this I'm almost done hallelujah arrogant people though arrogant people can't shout over grace arrogant people amen gonna sit there amen whenever they hear the word grace because they believe it's all about them arrogant people gonna sit there because they believe it's their degree arrogant people gonna sit there because they believe they that talented arrogant people gonna sit there because they believe they that pretty arrogant people gonna sit there because they believe they got that much swagger but baby you ain't gonna have enough swagger to go where God has you to go it's only gonna be by 
Arrogant people are self-centered, self, self-centered, self-centered. They believe the world revolves around them. But baby, can I tell you, some of y'all going to have to get off your high horse. And some of y'all that ain't get off that high horse from 2013, baby, you just stay right there. Amen. Because you're going to encounter grace. Hallelujah. And when you encounter grace, it's going to be because you find out that you ain't all that you thought you were. Hallelujah. Okay, let me just can't help y'all because maybe y'all don't know what arrogant people look like. Amen. Arrogant people. People will get mad if you forget to acknowledge them their name hallelujah look at somebody say it ain't matter if I'm overlooked hallelujah because it's only by his grace arrogant people amen they only want everything to be about them so when you on the phone talking to them here's how they gonna sound amen you gonna call them say girl I gotta tell you my, my brother I gotta tell you about something that been going on in my life and they can say well before you do that let me tell you but what happened with me amen and they ain't gonna let you even get in how of what you call to tell them because all they want the conversation to do is revolve around them Hallelujah. they'll be amen you'll be in a conversation with somebody else and you'll be telling them God is so good you know what they do in sister so and so life man ain't that something how God brought brother so and so out and then they'll step up in your conversation well yeah you will know what God do for me They believe the world revolves around them. Can you just tell somebody they can't fight you there in church? Now, I ain't guarantee what's going to happen after church. But, 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 but could you just tell your neighbor, say, get over yourself. Watch this. So we got to remember the world doesn't revolve around us. It's not all about you. Watch what Evelyn Underhill says. I told you all I wish I had the PowerPoint up. Watch what Ever and Evelyn Underhill says or describes self-centered people. She said they mostly spend their lives conjugating three verbs. To want, to have, to do. I want, I'll have, I'll do. I'll want, I'll have, I'll do. I'll want, I'll have, I'll do. Watch this. And then she says they always craving, clutching, and Fussing, craving, clutching, and fussing, craving, clutching, and fussing, craving, clutching, and fussing. Who am I talking to? Amen. Craving, fussing, and clutching, or clutching and fussing, whatever you fussing, clutching, and craving. Quite simply, what they are all about is themselves. They are obsessed with themselves. 2014 is a year to not be obsessed with yourself, but to get over. Watch this. Great dreams. Watch this. Great dreams don't involve the dream alone. Now, here's where it really gets good. Great dreams don't involve the dreamer alone. That's why God can't give self-centered people great dreams because what God is getting ready to do in your life hear me ain't only gonna bless you what God is getting ready to do in your life it's not just gonna watch this bless your family what God is getting ready to do in your life ain't only gonna bless your community what God getting ready to do in your life ain't only going to bless Exuma. What God getting ready to do in your life ain't only going to bless, watch this, Nassau. It's going to bless the entire Bahamas. Watch this. And even more than that, the dream is so great. The dream is so great and the dream is so great that, watch this, that dream is about to bless the entire nation, the entire world. And I don't know if you know who you're sitting next to, but you're sitting next to somebody, amen, that could have the possibility and the propensity and the potential to bless the entire world. Amen. I don't know what people told you before you came into Relevant Kingdom Center, but baby, you got the ability to bless and change and impact the entire so God can give great dreams to self-centered people. Amen. Watch this. He doesn't just um, bless you. Amen. To bless yourself. But he blesses you so that you could be a blessing to others. 
That's why your generosity got to go up another level. That's why some of you got to start looking for some people that you could bless even from the beginning of the year. Amen. You want me to tell you what? Whenever we're trying to make room for something, we go in. We take all of the stuff, amen, that taking up some room, amen, and we move it on the side. And we say, guess what? I got to move this on the side because I expecting some other stuff to come in here. Can I just ask somebody, are you expecting some stuff in your life? Are you expecting anything to happen? Well, you got to get ready to be a blessing to someone somebody else and so and so self-centered people they, they they only think about me myself and I but here's here's I go I gone through all that it's 11 35 I got a few more minutes sister Palm I went through all of that just to tell you because I know if some of y'all smart people realize I really ain't tell y'all what dying looks like yet Some of y'all still be y'all been caught up in the shout. <laughs> and some of y'all sitting there like Negro, all oh, that's good. But you still ain't tell me what dying looks like yet. Uh, Brother Les, could you bring my stuff up here real quick? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so here's what dying's look, dying looks like. Uh, Carson, put this on the screen. Don't shout now. Put this on the screen. God, y'all ready for this? I show y'all what dying looks like. But let me just give y'all one, one sentence to keep in your mind. God will diminish you. Pain. Pain. God will diminish you, here's the second half, so that he can develop you. Purpose. God will diminish you so that he can. Now watch this. When I thought about this, I said, God, you got to show me what dying looks like. And here's what God took me to. Even from the story of Gideon, and you can see how we ended. But watch this. God took me to what he does. Y'all going to think I crazy. With bread. What he does with bread. Bible says when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, he took the bread. He has the first process in dying. Believe it or not. Tell y'all, it's a whole lot of different from what you've been taught. He took the bread and he blessed the bread. Okay, any blessed people up in here? All the blessed people make some noise real quick. Okay. So, y'all remember Joseph? Joseph was 14 years old. And God showed up to Joseph and God showed up to bless him. And God showed up and he blessed Joseph with a dream. And God blessed Joseph and said, Joseph, everybody going to be bowing down to you at one day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, Joseph, going to bow their knee to you. You're going to be great, Joseph. Joseph like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't do that dance these days. Yeah, they could be bowing down. As a matter of fact, Joseph was so blessed that his daddy used to treat him better than he used to treat all the other kids. He had so much, watch this, favor. You know, all the church people is buck that. <laughs> he had so much favor that his brothers got mad at him. Can I tell y'all, some of y'all got so much favor that people mad at you and you don't even know why they mad at you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of y'all got so much favor that y'all are the center of everybody's, amen, conversation. As a matter of fact, amen, if Exuma had a headline in news, you'll see your picture show up first thing on the screen. Hallelujah. Because that's just how much favor y'all get. And y'all know in a small island, the minute you got favor, everybody looking at you and everybody going to be talking about you. What, you think they selling drugs? You think they doing some things? Favor. Okay, y'all don't like Joseph. Let's go to somebody else. Everybody say bless. This is what dying look like. 
he blesses you but then y'all remember Moses y'all remember Moses baby Moses he don't get too much play amen these days but can I tell y'all Moses was blessed because when all of the other baby boys had died at the hands of the Pharaoh of Egypt here's what happened Moses was blessed enough that his mother was able to put him in a basket in a river and he was even so much more blessed that in that river he just happened to end up at the palace can I just tell somebody something some people gave up on you and put you in some stuff that you probably should have died in but they didn't expect you to end up at the palace baby hallelujah look at your neighbor say I'm at the palace uh, hallelujah they thought my pain would have killed me <sighs> but I'm at the palace Moses was blessed everybody say bless y'all know Job because y'all ain't shout over Moses y'all know Job ain't no one like talk but Job for real but y'all know what the Bible said the Bible says Job was so blessed, even the devil recognized it. No wonder all them devils talking about you. <laughs> Job was so blessed, even the devil. Say, God, you see that Job there? He blessed. <laughs> he blessed. Everybody say bless. So God will, will bless you. But watch what happens. It's the strange thing. That's why I could tell you all and I could start off and say, you're great. And then all of a sudden I come to you and say, you got to die to yourself. Because he will bless you. He will tell you how gifted you are. He will put his hand on you. Amen. This is the process he did with bread. And then after he bless you and tell you how gifted and talented you are. Watch what happens, y'all. He breaks you. I wish I had some bread in my hand right now. Because then some of y'all don't understand. Amen. You see, I told y'all I look crazy, Brother Calarico, and strange things talk to me. Rocks and things talk to me. Because when I go outside and I down and I kick in rocks, the rockets say, dude, what you cooking me for? Because you got so much to praise God for. If you don't praise him, you know what the Bible say? The rocks go cry out. So I say to the rocks, cool, cool, cool. I got something to praise him for. Thank you, Jesus. Because I let no rock cry out for me. Tell y'all strange things talk to me. Amen. And y'all know when that bread getting break, that bread is saying to me, dude, that hurt. See, when you getting break, you in pain. And some of you wondering, God, how come you blessed me? And all of a sudden, all of the things that were around me, it seemed like it crumbling apart. How come you bless me and all of a sudden uh, my marriage, it crumbling apart. God, you gave me the vision and the dream to start the business and all of a sudden I struggling just to keep the door. Seemed like it falling apart. I was so happy when I first held that baby boy, that baby girl in my arm. Brought us so much joy. But God, if I knew in their teenage years, in their adult years, this is how I was going to respond and react or this is what they were going to do. God, you bless me, but, but how come you're breaking me? And let me tell you all something about this breaking process. God will break you so much that not only you would know you're breaking, but other people will recognize you're breaking. Okay, you all know Job. I told you all he was blessed that the devil talked about him. But watch this. When God started breaking him, all of his friends saw. There are some people in this community that saw you breaking. Yeah, there's some people in this in this in this uh, island or in this uh, nation that saw some of the things you went through. Yeah, they saw the divorce in 2013, in 2012, in 2010. Yeah, they saw when you had to close down the business. They saw, amen, when people, amen, talked about you and, and brought you down. They saw it because there's something about when God breaks you that there are times that he'll allow other people to see the break in. But watch this, not only do you feel like you're breaking, but you all know when you're getting break, it feels like you have a beat down. 
the other day, and I, I tell you, the other day, Sister Lucy, Shari and I was upstairs, and we got some nuts from some real good people. Hallelujah. You know them Christmas nuts, the, 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 the round ones, what you call them? The walnuts, right? Yeah. Them, them. Yeah, we, we, we had some of them. And we was upstairs, and you know why? All of a sudden, the Mari, one morning, they just fell like they wanted to get some nuts. And so, so when me and Shari noticed, all we hear is, pam, 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 pam. She goes out and looks over the, the railing, because we have upstairs, downstairs, they downstairs. And she meet the boys beating, all, beating the nuts, beating the heck out of the nuts. Because as far as they concerned, they wanted some. But in order for them to get what was on the inside. Woo. Some of y'all so slow, I got to finish it. <laughs> in order for y'all, in order for them to get what was on the inside, they had to break what was on the and I told you all greatness is on the inside of you. And in order for God to get that greatness on the inside, on the outside, sometimes he got to break what's on the outside. Oh, amen. Can I just tell you all God will break you down because your dream is so great. And so much other people depending on that, that he can't allow that greatness to stay on the inside of you. And so God will break you down until you realize sleeping with them, you can't walk in a great dream from him. God will break you down until you realize some of that bitterness and that envy and that anger and that resentment that you get on the inside of you. You got to get it on the outside because there's something else that he wants to put on the inside so that people on the outside could really be blessed from what's on the. God will break you down. Look at your neighbor say he'll break you down. Uh, Brother Kelly, real quick, amen, you're going to be uh, my help. He looks sharp with this tie on, eh? First Sunday in the month. Hallelujah. Give me them, give me them, uh, them stuff. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, everybody say this with me. Yeah, this, see, I got my bag of goodies. This is a coconut, right? This is a coconut. Stay up here, Brother Kelly, real quick. This is a coconut. Everyone say this with me, because I, I just look at this as a seed, even though the coconut seed is a little bigger. Everyone say this with me. Say, I am a seed that was planted on the planet with a purpose to perform. Say it one more time. Say, I am a seed that was planted on the planet with a purpose to perform. Now watch this, because when he breaking you, you feel exactly like a seed. Because watch this, this seed, let's just say if this was a mango seed or canap seed or juju seed, what else kind of seed y'all got? Sea grape seed, y'all island people, eh? So let's just say that, watch this, watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, and y'all write it down. In John chapter 12, verse 24, unless John 12 and 24, remember John Grace, John, no one greater. John, though this is, amen, the, the disciple, the apostle, watch what he says. Unless a grain of wheat or a seed falls to the earth, watch the big word, and can I tell somebody something? You felt just like a seed. And can I tell y'all, Joseph was blessed, but he was a seed because he ended up finding himself in the bottom of a pit. That was a symbol that this was the first stage for me to plant you. But he just didn't feel like he was in that pit. He felt like he was getting covered in dirt. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's some people in 2013 you felt like you've been covered in dirt. Yeah, that divorce had you feeling like you was covered in dirt. Every time they talked about you, every time, amen, you felt the pain of the circumstance you was going through, you felt like you was covered in dirt. But can I tell you, the dirt had a purpose. 
Because God says, regardless of all of the stuff, regardless of all the mess that was poured over you, that was just nutrients. In other words, all the opposition was really opportunity. <laughs> all of the hard times, all they're doing was helping you. Because unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, it ain't going to be able to produce fruit. Okay, maybe can I tell you all like this? He's breaking you. You feel like you're covered in dirt. But can I tell you, because of the dirt, you're stronger than you was last year. Because of the dirt, you're wiser. Hallelujah, than you was last year. The same things that they used to get over with you with in 2013, tell them they got to change their game, baby. Because you ain't falling for the things that you fell for last year, this year. Hallelujah. You've been covered in too much dirt. And I know but you, but I don't like dirt too much. Hallelujah. But God says all of the mess, I'm about to turn it around but here's the other th thing god gave me in this breaking process because you're a seed when you're breaking you can't just go anywhere and you can't just be around everybody i'm talking about the dying process bless he breaks and when he breaks you you feel like you're covered in dirt you feel like you're getting beat down but watch this y'all he said when you're dying and you're in that breaking process be careful who you're around be careful what coming into your life because here's the thing. Some of y'all, let's pour some more down. Some of y'all, he says you're a seed that was planted on this planet with a purpose, with a form. He said, but the thing about it is you can allow yourself to be around rocks. Y'all know what rocks represent? Rocks represent them hard-hearted people. Them people that's so arrogant, them people that's so stuck on themselves, them people, amen, that believe that the world revolves around them. God says they're like a cancer. As a matter of fact, amen, I got to hurry this thing up. But God says the more you hang around hard-hearted people, it affects your heart. The more you hang around hard-hearted people, it affects your growth. And so rather, i rather the soil, everybody say the soil. I'd rather the dirt than to be in some rocks. I don't know who it is, but God says, I'm taking some of you out the environment that you've been in for years. And I'm putting you in a different environment so that you could grow. Look at somebody say, I'm a seed. Hallelujah. I was planted. Say, I was planted on the planet with a purpose to perform. And I ain't hanging around no bunch of rocks. <laughs> say it one more time say I ain't hanging around no bunch of rocks I want to hang around some people that been through some stuff but still standing I want to hang around some people that understand that no matter where I come from there's something I'm going to I want to hang around some people that ain't going to look at me because I ain't got it all together I want to hang around some people that know what grace and mercy look like can I just get a test real quick is there anybody up in relevant kingdom center that understand what grace and mercy Can I tell some of you that don't have a church home? You could be planted right here. Because a bunch of people that here understand what mass look like, what mass feel like. And some of us still in some mess. But at least it'd be it better than being around. And then what's worse than rocks? Just that I'm gonna get stuck. It's some thorns. These are the people that, that in your breaking process cause you to break down more than you even supposed to break down. These are the people that ain't got nothing good to say about you. These are the people that will make a bad situation worse. Can I tell you, God is even telling me some of you got some family every time you're around them. It's like the energy. You could be happy. And then all of a sudden, sad. Because you were seed that was planted on the planet. And if you're around the thorns, what they're going to do is suck the life out of you. 
Okay, y'all still ain't feeling me? These are the people that every time you get a dollar and they find out about it, they're going to come and say, can I have? Rather than ask you, how can I give? Who am I talking to? This year, you got to get rid of some thorns. And for some of y'all that feel like you got a, thorn, a thorn stuck, God said, I give you grace for it. <laughs> Say, I'm a seed that was planted on the planet to perform with a purpose to perform. Amen. But I, I'm, I'm done. And this is my fifth closing. And y'all, I, I know I read an article say preachers need to stop telling people they finish and they ain't finished. Hallelujah. But, but I'm, I'm finished after this. <laughs> We started and we ended off with Gideon. Everybody say Gideon. Gideon was a seed that was planted on the planet with a purpose to perform. Can I tell you what happened? Gideon was on the opposite side of the spectrum from Stephen. Gideon was in somebody that was arrogant. Gideon was someone that didn't believe in himself. I've been taking a lot of time preaching with them arrogant people. But can I tell you under the sound of my voice are some people that don't even believe in yourself. You've been through so much, you don't believe in yourself. You face so much things, you don't believe in yourself. So God had to show up to Gideon and say, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. He blessed him. Because he said, get up from among the hole. Get out of the hole. He was in a hole. And he says, you got so much to do. You're going to be the one to deliver your nation. Gideon said, God, you sure? It's me. He said, yeah, it's you. Because when you know some of y'all, they have greatness, you say, and you sure, pastor, you're talking to me. You don't know, boy. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's you. You got greatness on the inside of you. And so after that, Gideon started to get that greatness. He started to rise up. And Gideon had 25, 12,000, 22,000 men starting to follow him. Because anytime you start to walk in greatness, you go always find a lot of people starting to surround you. 22,000 men. And all of a sudden, when he was getting ready to go to fight the greatest fight of his life, God said, Gideon, you got too much people with you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now, God. You just bless me. Tell me how great I am. I got the confidence that I need to get. And now you're telling me I got too much men with me? He said, yeah, I want you to do me a favor. Tell everyone who's afraid, go home. You can't hang around people that are afraid this year. You can't hang around. You know, girl, I won't go Nassau. Too much killing. Me? My Grammy and now, so I can tell you the truth, I's a grown man. And I'll go to Grammy and say, Grammy, can I use your car? No, boy, Dury, it's six o'clock. And you know, they're killing people out there. <laughs> I have this chain on. Uh, uh, it's a nice chain, right? But at the end of the day, when I go now, I saw my Grammy say, Well, Jesus, Dury, why you come here with that chain on? Boy, give me this. Let me put this up in my drawer till you go, because they will snatch it off your neck. Dury, why you get your wedding ring on? Grammy, what you mean why I get my wedding ring on? <laughs> Some people so fearful, they always talk in negative. They don't believe in your dream. Because when you tell them it, they say, but you crazy. Mm -mm, that ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So he said, tell all of them who are afraid and gossip, let's ride on. They say, tell all of them, tell all of them who are afraid, go home. See you later. Bible say 22, th the Bible say about 10,000 of them or more left. There's some people that God getting ready to cuddle your life. Some of y'all was wondering what was happening in 2013 when them people was walking out your life. God says, because I was cutting some people out your life that was going to hinder you from going to the place I had you to go. God start cutting. Everybody say cutting. cutting. Dying, breaking. Breaking, cutting. But all of a sudden, God said, Gideon, I ain't done cutting yet. And some of y'all thought 
they left. But God said, this year? Get ready, because more getting ready to leave. But watch this. After God cut, he said, Gideon, I want you to go and tell them, the rest of them, go and drink some water and watch how they drink. 